Hello again, problem solvers. So we're on lesson 20 now, congruence, doing the ice sheet, so make sure you have that with you. Uh, second to last one, we're not going to do area or the infinity ones. Um, so we're getting close to the end here. And this is on modular arithmetic. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, uh, watch the PowerPoint carefully because uh, it's kind of a strange idea. But basically, we want to think about how um, being in a, a mod 3 or mod 4 or mod 100 universe can help us with problems. So the next problem, the very first one says, what are the last four, two digits of 7 to the 7 to the 7 to the 7? So the last two digits. Uh, well, the last two digits would be the remainder when you divide by 100, right? So think about the mod 100. And the hint says write out the third and fourth powers of 7 in the mod universe and then write this out over and over. So 7 cubed. Uh, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, and I don't want to do it, to be honest with you. Um, so, uh, I want to do this mod 100, right? So, 7 squared is just 49, but 7 cubed would be 343. That's 43 mod 100. Well, because I only want the last two digits. 7 to the fourth uh, mod 100. Well, I can do, four, in, mod, in mod arithmetic, you're allowed to mod part of it at, at a time. So 7 cubed is this, and then you have another 7. So I only need to do that, which is what, two, eight, 301? So that's 1 mod 100, if I did this right. Yeah, 2401 is the whole thing. Um, so I would get the same answer. If I did the real math and did 7 to the 4th and then did mod 100, you'd get 1. Okay, so that's helpful. So that means that 7 to the 7 is 7 cubed times 7 to the 4th. But again, we're going to stay in mod 100 land. This is 1, so this is 43 times 1, so this is 43. Okay, so this up here then is a bit crazy. So 7 to the 7, you have to be careful, I can't split it like this. That's not how this problem is written because you would multiply those, that's not what's going on. But I can say, mod 100, but I can think of this as 7 to the 7 to the 43, mod 100. So 7 to the 7 would be the same as 43. So now let's focus on this and do 7 to the 43. Well, every 4 is just 1, so this is 7 to the 4 times 7 to the 4, da -da -da, 10 times, times 7 to the 3. And each of these, mod 100, is 1. So times 1 doesn't do anything, and 7 cubed is 43. So that's 43 again, mod 100. So this is equal to 7 to the 43, uh, which we just did again. So using exactly what we just did, um, that should be 43. Because 7 to the 43 is exactly what we just did. So the last two digits, if you write this number out, are 43. Okay, next problem has a crazy number that we want to show is divisible by 7. So it's 3333 three, 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 to the 4444 four, 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 Okay, so let's work with um, powers of 10 and try to, let's try to figure out what's going on with 3333. Three, three. Um, so what we're going to do first is work on 3333. Three, three, three. And if you think about this number, this is 3000 plus 300 plus 30 plus 3. Right, and we're trying to do mod 7. So I'm going to focus on powers of 10 first, and we'll use that for this, and we'll use it for 4444. Four, four, four. So 10 is equal to 3 mod 7. 100 is 10 times 10, uh, which would be 3 times 3. So using this rule from before. So that's 9 mod 7. Um, 100 was that. So 1,000 is 10 cubed, which would be... 27, but mod 7, that's 6, because you can pull 21 out of there. And then lastly, there's a last one we need, 
Yeah, a thousand is the last one we need, right? So, go ahead and back up to these. Three stays the same. Thirty. Well, that's really three times three because of this rule. This is three times a hundred, which is nine. And then thousand was six, so this is three times six. And this is much easier math to do. So this number comes out to be nine, twelve, uh, twenty-seven, so thirty-nine. 39 and 18 uh, comes out to be 57. And 56 is a multiple of 7, so that's 1 mod 7. It's one more than a multiple of 7. Okay, so that number is 1. So, so far I can say this is 1 to the 4444, 4, 4, 4, which is just 1, plus 4444 4, 4 to the 1, right? So I just, and then that goes away. So I need to do all the same stuff for a 4. But really, I did all the powers of 10. So this should be even much quicker. So let me kind of box off what I did here. These are my powers of 10. This is my stuff for 3,000. Or 3,333. So 4,444, I can do the same trick. So this is 4 times, and we said 10 was 3. And we said that 100 was the same as 9. And we said that 1,000 was the same as 6. So if I add these up, how many copies of 4 is that? 10, um, 19. So it's 4 times 19. And mod 7, 19 is the same thing as 5. So 4 times 5, that's 20. And that would be 6, mod 7. Okay, so up here, if that whole base is the same thing as 6, this is 1 plus 6 to the 1, which is 7, and mod 7, that is 0. And we're done. Crazy problem, but it's really just a bunch of modular arithmetic. So I would, if you didn't follow this, I would go back through and do it again, because all the tricks I did there for modular arithmetic, those are the key pieces of making this work. Okay, another problem about consecutive positive integers, each of which can be written as the sum of two non-zero perfect squares. So that's what we want to show is true or false. So let's first show by exhaustion that the sum of perfect squares cannot be congruent to 3 mod 4. Okay, so if you're congruent to 3 mod 4, that means you, if we want to take two perfect squares, we want to show that's false, it said. We need to show that uh, two perfect squares a squared plus b squared must be congruent. So show perfect square is not congruent to 3 mod 4. We must show that it's going to be 1, 2, or 0 mod 4. And why is that true? Um, if you have so you have two perfect squares why would that? This is a bit tricky to show, but all you need to think about is uh, to show by exhaustion on the sheet. Think about what a and b, what they are congruent to uh, mod four. It's going to be zero, one, two, or three, right? So if you take and the same thing with b, right? So this is a bit annoying to show, um, but if you think about if I square these numbers, so a squared congruencies and then b squared congruencies. Mod 4, if you square these numbers, you get um, 0, 1, 2 squared is 4, which is 0, 3 squared is 9, which is 1. And then if you add two of these together, you are never going to get, um, you can add them like this, right? But you're never going to add two of those and get 3. You can get 2, 0, or 1. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is never 0 mod 4. Sorry, it's never 3 mod 4. Okay, so now that I've got that, the whole point was to show that four consecutive positive integers can't be the sum of two perfect squares. So the, the reason I did all this mess is because I'm going to show that this four consecutive positive integers um, is, is going to be congruent to three mod four. So um, if you take four integers in a row, so n plus one, n, n plus one, n plus two, n plus three, it's four in a row, so the remainder is divisible by four have to be um, zero, zero, one, two, three, or one, two, three, zero. One of them is three mod four. 
So 1 is congruent to 3 mod 4. And the way the problem is said is that it's false that you have four consecutive positive integers where all of them are a sum of perfect squares. Um, that's false because one of these, it's four in a row, when you divide by four, it's got to be a remainder 0, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 0, or 2, 3, 0, 1. One of them is congruent to 3 mod 4. None of these are. So that shows you that the problem is false. So it's a contradiction. All right, the last one is a bit crazy. Um, it says you have a sequence defined by A1 is 2, A2 is 5, and I have um, a recursive definition. So AN plus 1 is 2 minus N squared, so that's the index. AN and then 2 plus N squared, AN minus 1, N greater than equal to 2. And it says, do there exist indices? So that you get this. So they're saying, are there two? All they're saying is, are there two numbers in here that multiply to a third number? So are there three terms in the sequence that one is product of the other two? That's all they're trying to say. Okay, so I'm going to write up some terms, then I'm going to get stressed because they get huge fast. So the first few terms are 2, 5, negative 13, 272. Uh, negative 6607, and then the tenth term is already a trillion something, so I'm going to stop there. Um, this, if you look at the first few terms, um, the beginning terms are both congruent to 2 mod 3, which is a little crazy to think about. And this is negative 13, so if you go up by 3s, you would get, if you go up 15, you get to 2. And so basically I'm just looking for a mod that's relevant. So if all of these are congruent to 2 mod 3. And um, to check that, we're actually... Uh, so all the a's are congruent to 2 mod 3. To check that, we're going to use induction. So here's the base case. This one works, and so does this one. If you suppose that... Um, so a, k is... I guess they have k and k minus 1. So ak is congruent to ak minus 1 is congruent to 2 mod 3. Then when you have ak plus 1, you're going to have um, 2 minus n squared, right? ak plus 2 plus n squared. This is our proof by induction here. Um, a minus 1. Well, this is going to become a 2. That's going to become a 2 because we're in the mod 3 universe. So 2 minus n squared times 2, plus 2 plus n squared times 2. I should say congruent here. Uh, multiply all that out, the 2 n squareds go away, and you get um, 4 minus 2 n squared plus 4 plus 2 n squared, so those go away. You get 8, which is congruent to 2 mod 3. Okay, so all of the numbers in this the sequence are congruent to 2 mod 3. Um, now, if I wanted to multiply two of these, no, mod 3, because remember the problem is about doing a product, well, 2 times 2 is congruent to 1 mod 3. So there's never two terms that multiply to a third term because they would have a different remainder mod 3 than everything in the sequence, uh, everything else that has, and really the whole sequence, everything's supposed to be 2 mod 3. You can't have a term then that's 1 mod 3, which every product would do that. So it's false. All right, that is the end of our lesson on congruence.